Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi and today we're doing something really special for you guys. We're going to go through and do a tutorial on how to fly fish for trout, for rainbow trout in particular, or any kind of trout that you have around you in the world with a fly rod with beads. So stay tuned you guys, we have a lot of information for you today and we're going to catch some fish for you as well so you're not going to want to miss this. First and foremost, what we're gonna go over first, like we always do, is our rod selection. This is one that's new to me. Okuma has just come out with it. Really, if you're gonna be using any kind of fly rod for this adaption, being that more of a nymphing setup like we're gonna be showing you, you want something that's a little heavier, at least above a six weight. So six, seven, eight weight rod works really well. This is the Okuma Nomad fly rod in, in eight weight. Um, this is actually a pretty light eight weight if you ask me. Most eight weights are gonna be a little bit more stiff and a little bit stouter. So anywhere from a six to an eight weight, uh, six, seven, or eight, it's really gonna help you a lot more for this. Having that really a little bit more of a sturdy rod is gonna allow you to cast a little bit easier with this heavy presentation that we're gonna have on here. We're not casting a dry fly, we're casting weight and a float. Um, and so you're gonna want something that has a little more backbone to get it out there, and I'll show you that technique. But if you're under rotted and you have something that's a little bit too small, it's gonna make it a lot harder for you to cast. So Nomad, nine foot, eight weight, fly rod works great. This is the seven, eight Nomad reel that comes with it. It's got a perfect little, I like when that drag is nice and smooth going forward. It's got an adjustable drag, nice and smooth reel. And it's really the perfect setup for me. I like this little handle grip too, because you're really doing a lot of whipping around. So having that soft kind of you know, malleable grip here allows you to keep that rod tightly in your hand and make these good casts. So what I have on here is just a typical trout floating line. You don't have to get fancy with your line in this regard. You can use some kind of a shooting head or uh, any kind of uh, commando head, which is gonna be a little bit heavier line that'll actually help you cast a little bit better. Um, but just any normal fly line works great. So what I have on the end of there is pretty simple as well. This comes with a little loop on the end, if I can catch it here. So your fly line always comes with a little loop on it. It has just a little tag end loop here. And I just do a double overhand knot, attach about six to eight feet of 12 pound test. This is the Shinsi. You can use any kind of 12 pound SS. If you're fishing a little bit more pressured rivers and, and heavier fished rivers, you wanna go a little bit smaller, maybe down to a 10 or an eight, but we have big trout here behind us, so we're sticking with a 12 today. So I got about seven to eight feet of 12, of 12 pound test here. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna start about a foot and a half up the line, I'm gonna add a split shot. And putting that split shot on there is what's gonna allow me to get down. So I'm gonna squeeze that thing down, just like so. Just below that, I'm gonna take and add one of my favorite beads, which we'll go over bead selection and stuff here in just a second. But I'm gonna put that bead on there, slide it straight up my line. And one of the tricks that I'm gonna do here, rather than using a toothpick or any kind of a, a plastic peg, I'm just gonna do a nice little bead knot. And what that is, is just a double overhand right over the top of that bead, just like so. I'm gonna go one, and we're gonna go two just like that, and we're gonna pull it tight with all those braids coming right on top of that, that bead like that. That way it's gonna hold it in place. So from here, I'm gonna grab my number four hook, number four mustad mosquito hook, just a perfect, perfect little number four there. You don't wanna get too heavy or too small. Number six hooks will work just as well, um, but again, we have some big trout behind us, so we're gonna stick with a little bit heavier gear today. And then I'm gonna do just a normal fisherman's knot here, seven wraps. Run that back through the eye of my loop. Pull her tight, and now we're fishing. So, what I'm gonna do above this, I like to sometimes fish without an indicator. Um, it actually, I feel like, helps you a little bit as you go through the drift, and I like the way the take happens. But what I'm gonna do here, along the same lines, just so I can do it proper to show all you guys out there, guys and gals, is I'm gonna add a little indicator. So. Just a little one inch indicator works really great. You can go a little bit bigger, you can go a little bit smaller, whatever your kind of preference is and what size indicator you like to use. But what I'm gonna do with that indicator, I'm gonna fold my line over here, just like so. You run it right through that top eye of the indicator and just do a little loop around that ball, just like that. And loop it around that ball. And that should keep it right in place where I want it. And that way I can slide that ball up and down my line and allows me to adjust my depth a little bit. So, so one of the most important parts of this bead fishing for trout is gonna be your bead selection. 
that's really, really imperative when fishing any kind of area with beads is you want to match the hatch, kind of like any style of fly fishing. What we're matching here is the hatch of eggs. So you want to have a good color range and a good size range of what these eggs are going to be like. What I have here with me is a lot of different trout beads from troutbeads.com. There's a lot of different manufacturers of beads out there, but really I like to have a good versatile mix of sixes and eights. You can use the 10 mils and the 12 mils and up to a little bit bigger in certain situations, but what you really want is those six mils to eight mil beads. And what I can, what, what you see here is right on the package here, these ones say six millimeter. And that's what you want to look for is that six millimeter rating. And that's going to be their size of the bead itself. So these are six mils and this is what we're going to call an eight mil here. This is an eight millimeter bead. These ones have a blood dot. So really you have your complete color range, you have your different sizes, six and eights, and then you have certain ones that have a blood dot. And what those indicate is basically just a different stage in the hatch of these fish. So when these eggs get to a certain point, they start to get an embryo on the inside, and that's what those blood dots emulate, is that small embryo inside that egg. So, having a good range of colors, all the way from those light tangerine, to a red, to a peach, all the way up to like a pink or like a dead egg, which would be almost white, is imperative in being able to target and key in on what these trout are gonna be eating. Now that we showed you guys the setup, we're gonna step into the river, show you a couple different kinds of runs that you wanna look for, and hopefully catch some big trout for you. So stay tuned. All right, everybody, so what we have here, we're standing in the river now, and we're standing in your really iconic kind of bead fishing run. The reason these fish are eating these beads in this particular situation and in most situations that you're going to find all across the world is that they're feeding on some kind of spawning fish. Um, these fish are going up and they're spawning in, in spawning gravel, dumping their eggs and it's floating down through these runs and riffles and these trout are sitting in these strategic little areas and just feeding and feeding and feeding. So what you really want to look for is any kind of nice moving water below a real slow stagnant run where these fish are going to be spawning or any kind of area you know there's some kind of salmon spawning or other trout spawning going on. So we found that area just above us is a big slow pool and it breaks off into this beautiful little choppy broken surface trout run. Why these fish love this is because they can have these perfect little avenues that they can sit and hang in and all they have to do is move side to side and eat those eggs. They're going up and down the river just searching for food, which is these eggs. So we're going to find that now that we have, I'm going to start showing you guys really how to work your way through. Here we can see them pretty well, but if you couldn't see these fish, you'd want to be able to move around and just cover a lot of water and hit a lot of those pockets that you know that those fish are going to be spawning above and those trout are going to want to sit in like this. So what I'm going to do first as I start here is I always want to start close. The casting of this is a little bit easier than most. If you're going to be fly fishing, it's more of a flop cast and you'll kind of see that in the, in the demonstration here and how I cast this around. But basically you keep that arm, keep in your box, you want to answer the phone and you want to hang it up as you're casting. You don't want to get it way out here and use your shoulder. You want to be using your elbow and you want to stay on a level plane when you're casting with your fly rod. You want to be able to use your rod as your tool and not use your arm or your, your muscle to cast this presentation. More so just your, your rod presentation and the way that you load that rod with your fly line each time to get it out there. So again, I'm going to start right off of the bat stressing our 45s. When we fish like this, we want to fish 45 to 45. It's like your typical bead fishing. What you don't want to do is get in the habit of doing really long drifts down there because you'll catch them, but what happens is you end up losing those fish because you don't get a very good hook angle on them. So what I'm going to start here, I'm going to start right out in front of me. I'm going to work my way down. And as I start fishing this, I'm going to start slowly sliding my way down into this run. So you guys stay with me. I'm going to show you some good stuff here. So I strip most of my line out to begin with. And again, I'm going to keep in my box and I'm going to always cast it at least 90 or 45 upriver, depending on how deep it is. If I don't need this thing to sink very far, I'm not going to cast very far up. Again, one of the most crucial parts of fishing in this style is to keep that rod at that line angle correct on the water. You want to be making your mends and you want to be having a nice slow drift to where that bead's dragging along, creating that little drift down into those fish. Keep moving down here. There he is. You guys can see as I work my way down into this run, I was going close, middle, far, two steps. Close, middle, far, two steps. And it really kind of goes great back to the same lines of any tutorial that I've made for these fish. 
or bead fishing in particular, is movement. If you can see a fish in front of you and you worked him, if he doesn't bite within the first few casts, you either need to change your presentation, AE change your bead, color, size, whatever it might be, and or change your angle. So as I started about 15 feet up here with Sean, we've just slowly moved our way down and created that, that pattern where we go close, middle, far, close, middle, far, and we move our way down into these feeding lanes. So as soon as I got out of the shallow ripple and I got in towards these boulders where it drops off about six inches deeper, send a drift through there, first drift, bobber down, fish on. So keep that in mind, keep that movement, and don't get stuck fishing in one spot because you wanna move to these fish if they're not moving to you. My butt kicked here, everybody. So one very important thing as you're fighting these fish, more so even in your drag being set at the right or at the right tension, is how to fight these fish on a fly rod. It's something that a lot of people have a really difficult time learning, and it kind of scares them away from fly fishing because of that, because they don't have fun, because they lose their fish and they go home mad. So, but I want to show you here as we keep going down here. I'm sure we'll find a fish or two more is really how to manage that tension on your line. Almost like a center pin reel, you're gonna use your palm and you're gonna use your hand to slow that reel down more so than your drag. Your drag doesn't always have to be set perfect. What you do is as that fish runs, you create that pressure on the bottom of that reel with the palm of your hand and just lightly push and, and pull away to keep that pressure and allow that uh, tension to be held on that reel without pulling that hook out by grabbing and keeping it firm and holding that fish uh, holding that fish back. Basically, the moral of the story is when he takes off, you give it to him. You let him run. But as soon as you want to come back at it and you want to reel that fish in, you start reeling. Really, it's all just you and the fish. You have to read what he's going to do to you. And there you have it, everybody. Beautiful rainbow on a bead. There we go. And something I didn't cover earlier in this tutorial is our hook gap. You guys see how I have this bead. So one thing I wanted to cover with you guys that I didn't before is again that hook gap that you see I have here. That spacing from that bead to my hook. What's most important about that is basically it's one, for you to be able to catch more fish. Two, is for the safety of the trout. So you have these floating down and it helps your presentation a lot having that bead away from that hook because it doesn't weigh it down and drag it right on the bottom. It actually allows it to float and sit up above the surface. So when that fish goes and grabs that bead, that hook slides into the side of the mouth and has them hooked perfectly every time. So having that hook gap, whether it's three or four fingers, some places in the world they have regulations on how close that bead needs to be to the hook. Can't be too close. Um, so keep that about three to four finger lengths away because it'll help you land more fish. All right, so as we step back out here, I'm gonna start working my way down into the same section, casting about 90 degrees, stripping some line out, and just slowly drifting that down into those fish. Get one right on the edge of that rock over there. I know there's one living there. Again, you guys see how I'm going close, middle, far, close, middle, far. And you're just gonna keep working that system all the way down through the given run that you have. And one of my favorite things to do is as I'm working down through the run and I've kind of finished my, my run, if it's the spot I know there's fish and it's the spot I know I really don't want to leave, I'll just go right back up to the top of the run. And that's what that movement gives you, is that benefit of resting those fish that you've already fished on and then keeping moving on down through the run. So you get to rest those fish, you go back to the top, you change your presentation, you change your color, whatever it might be, and then you keep working your way down through the ripple again. There he is. <laughs> so along the same lines of what I was just saying too, is really, you know, 
be avid and be patient in how you fish these runs. It'll always teach you more. We can obviously all tell if any of any viewers watching right now are fishermen, this part of the run looks way better than where we started. But what happens is when you start high in the hole and you work your way down, is you get those fish that are sitting further up in that echelon of the hole and you work your way down to the sweet spot. So you've already hooked two or three fish before I even got to the best part of this hole. If I would have skipped it, I would have totally missed those fish and I would have been sitting right here and I only would have got the ones right in front of me. So be versatile, fish all the run, and be sure to move down and through it. It's got me way out there. You guys can see how this eight weight Nomad really holds up well with these fish. We've been catching fish day after day out here. And I'm, I'm fairly impressed with it. It hasn't broken. I've been being really mean on it. I've been just reefing on the darn thing, pulling these fish in and held up great. I'm really impressed with them. There you have it everybody, fish number two. See how that hook gap, that little spacing that we had in between the bead worked perfectly to get that fish in a nice safe spot. Beautiful fish. That's how it's done everybody. So one of the last important things I want to cover with you guys and really allow you to see well on camera here is the mending of your lines. Getting the right speed with the current is probably the most important part of this presentation. What you don't want is to allow a big downriver belly below that line, almost like a lot of these bobber dogging tutorials and stuff that we do for you guys, more in the steelhead realm. But having that good line management and allowing that float to just float at the speed of the current and not the speed that your line is pulling it downriver is what's going to allow you to get the best presentation every time for these trout. So making that mend immediately as you hit the water, almost think mend while it's still in the air. You want to hit that water, mend the line, and then start fishing it away from you. And as soon as you make that first initial mend, you're going to be in a good spot to start fishing that all the way down through the run. Okay, so now that I've gone and fished my way all the way down into the tail out, had a few little success, what I've done is I've walked all the way back up to the top like I was explaining earlier, changed my bead, and I'm going to work right back through the same section again. We'll see what happens here. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning into this tutorial today. We hope it helped you broaden your horizons a little bit on how to fish for trout in a really fun way with a fly rod and with beads. So if you guys like this video today, be sure to let us know and go down here and hit that little like button. What I want you to do most of all is I want you to comment below with, with, if this is a style of fishing that you would love to do. I know we've gotten Marlon into fly fishing lately, finally, so if he likes it, I think anybody can. Be sure to like this, be sure to comment below with what you guys thought of today, whether you love trout fishing, whether you love fly fishing, whatever it might be, but drop us a comment below and we'll get that conversation started. Be sure, do not forget to go down here and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button so that you can see all these videos that we have coming out for you guys every single day. And they're all for you to be able to go out and catch more fish. So do not be the one left behind on that. Hit that little bell notification so that you see when these videos come out each time. And again, thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. We'll see you out there on the river.